You're either going to be a terrible old man or a really cool old man. So you might as well try and point your way towards cool. He only likes the colored food pellets. He's got uh, he's got issues with how things look in his tank. He'll only eat it if it's handsome. He doesn't even chew anymore. Just swallows. Disgusting. So tell tell them how you're uh, paying your rent these days. Uh, right now I live here at 608C Haight Street. I work at Club Six a little bit, doing uh, drywalling and shit like that, and uh, luggage store occasionally, painting galleries for him and stuff. Real like I try to work as little as possible. Everybody that lives here uh, makes stuff, and it's sort of like a nice creative environment that's still a creative energy in this house. Yeah. We're all a bunch of dirt bags, and it's cheap, so. So you just got back from tour? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, we did a European tour, which apparently was uh, a total financial disaster for the German label at Ron. I think they lost like $14,000. I had a great time. It was my first time over in Europe proper. We're getting older now, so I think tour has mellowed out. It's like uh, Coach Whips, my old band, used to do like m way more drugs and stuff. My drummer now still does a ton of drugs and he's actually older than me, but I've, uh, I've mellowed out a lot. Like now I just like try and play the shows and maintain a level head so I can actually appreciate where I am as opposed to back in the day where I wouldn't recall being there at all. That's uh, Muhammad Jr. from the corner store down the street from my house, a record we put out a few years ago. We were, uh, we were trying to take pictures of him, trying to get him to look pissed off, but he's a real jovial, nice guy, and uh, he, he just wouldn't get pissed off. And uh, by the time we finished the photo shoot, he was actually pissed off. That's his real <laughs> irritated face. But that, that coach whips thing did hang in that store for quite a while. I was pretty proud. So why did you stop the Coach, Whip, Coach Whips band? We wrote a song one day and it just sucked. And I was like, this is it, we hit the wall. We still get along as friends, you know, and uh, let's stop now amicably, you know, like have like a good ending to a band. Because previous to that, even though I'm friends with most of the people I've played with, I can be a real pain in the ass. And uh, it seemed like a good opportunity to step out while something was still hot and fun. Everybody went on to do better and bigger <laughs> stuff. and. It's, uh, it was a good time to end it, I think. I heard a story that you were being courted by all those record labels when you were in Coach Whips and you would just get the free dinner and then tell them no at the end. We, yeah, I mean, it's, it's weird. I feel like those people, you can get a free dinner out of people with money. That's a good way. My mom always told me to say yes to a free meal. So if somebody wants to talk business and take me out for a free meal, I will. But maybe they just like taking out young guys for dinner. I don't know. But <laughs> I would always like, I'd be in New York and I'd be like, you want to take me out for dinner? Okay, we're going to this sushi place where they serve it on a virgin's thighs. Like I want to go somewhere really expensive, you know, like just take, you got to milk the man with the money for all he's worth if he's an asshole. Not that they're assholes. I don't fucking know, but you're, your band posters for the shows that you put together have become collector's items almost now. That'd be nice. Yeah, if or I can make some money. Be. I know I've, I've that's why I keep, that's why I'm making more of them now. I'm hoping that someday, maybe I'll die of getting, I'd like to get hit by a plane or something really, <laughs> really out there. That way, like, people will be like, yeah, that guy was all right, but he, he got hit by a fucking plane. Yeah, exactly. That'd be really cool. Or like drown in the sink, who knows? I don't want it to be drug related. That'd be real square at this point, but, but maybe that'd make my shit worthwhile. Who knows? Get a die. And then you transition more into being a fine artist. I like drawing a lot. I figure if I go deaf, I can draw all the time. So that's like, that's quickly approaching. I lie in bed every night with ringing ears and I'm like, someday when it just all goes, like I'm imagining when I go deaf, it'll just be like a real sudden thing. This is a piece that showed at Queen's Nails a little while ago during uh, one of their benefits and luckily didn't sell because it shows that I love the barbecue quite a bit right there. And there's just a, a piece right there called the incident at the barbecue. The uh, gorilla in the bottom right hand corner represents my, my roommate Galen <laughs> and uh, yeah.
this is one that I'm working on right now. If you want to come down here, uh, and this is uh, this will be the stuff that shows when we have uh, the show at the house here. With the ever-present barbecue in the bottom corner there. Uh, there you go. That's fucking heavy. You got some jack anyway. Yeah, this, these are all the things I've been drawing on lately. I've all been uh, crate lids from somebody else's big ass art. Cartoons were a big part of my life when I was a kid. You know, I was like always out there Saturday morning, like before my parents even got up, and uh, not really too good at doing realistic stuff so much. I, I can kind of dabble in it, but what just naturally comes out it tends to be like, I really like really full stuff right now. I like pencil a lot because it's just really easy for me to draw with just pencil. I can't even paint anymore, no color, just like black and white all the time. I can play some flute too. This is for the upper playground. Yeah, man, my parents bought me a flute for a, a flute with a with a nude man heart on. That's actually my stepdad. <laughs> the actual tombstone in Rhode Island for one of our old records. That's important. Note there's not a brown bag on that grave. That's uh, that's me and my mom when I was like six years old. That chick's a fox. Oh wait, that's uh, that's, that's, that's Fonzie. <laughs> Never mind. Hey, these are all like. Werewolves taken from like puffy stickers that I had when I was a kid and stuff of like that would say like the werewolf Okay, like that one right there is a werewolf skin rug That's wearing the hat that I used to wear in Ziegenbach Kopf actually <laughs> It was like half like this like moment of like creativity and half like a huge fucking mistake and I don't know what that band was that band was uh, straight up probably too much speed and thinking it was really hilarious It just kept snowballing until suddenly we were in Europe and I was like what the fuck just happened like how did we get here? based on this like one night off of like doing this like uh, recording a couple joke songs and then all of a sudden it ends up like hitting charts over there. I paid for it, I spent six days in the hospital, I almost lost my leg. You can see it right here. I get this piece of glass in my knee. If you could touch it, it's really disgusting. But I ended up in an English hospital. I've never uh, in my life been that sick and uh, my leg swelled up to the size of like a watermelon. Yeah, socialized medicine, man, you would think it'd be a really great thing. I mean, it was it was free care. Actually, they did send me a bill, I think, because I was American, but uh, they never took the glass out of my knee. They, they wouldn't give me any, uh, you know, antibiotics or anything. And every day they would trace on my leg the uh, rate of infection growth. So going up my leg, I had like a red stripe and then a blue stripe with a date and then a purple stripe. And it kept getting closer and closer to my junk. <laughs> and that was when I decided that it was time to go home. I was like, man, because basically they, they started talking about, they're like, we might have to lose the leg. And I was like, man, is the dick and balls going to go with that too? Because I don't know. I mean, I could see you getting around with one leg, but if you got to lose your junk, I mean, that's a, you got to do a lot of explaining later on for that. Just the leg, you can tell a crazy old war story. The dick and balls would have to be like the, uh, the story about how shitty the English hospital was. would be like, well, where's your dick? He'd be like, uh, English medicine, man. They, uh, they cut it off and sold it for an aphrodisiac, I don't know. I actually smuggled cocaine over there with me. I had wristbands on and I uh, filled them up with 20 bags of shitty cocaine from San Francisco and got on the flight and got off and we got to a hostel and I, I t pulled the wristbands off and dumped it all out on the table and all the guys we were with were like, what the fuck? I didn't tell them. They're like, dude, do you have any idea how much trouble we all could have gone to jail? And blah, 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 blah. They're all yelling at me. And I'm like, relax, we got through. Everything's cool. And then like two seconds later, everybody's like, can I get some of that? And uh, <laughs> we went to the first show super high, of course, because we did all our drugs in one day. And uh, we went out in the audience. We were in like underwear and leather hats and shit. And went out and like smashed all the beer bottles in the place, like grabbing everybody's drinks and smashing them. And then that club got really pissed about that and called, phoned the club the next night in London to tell them that we were gonna break a bunch of stuff and uh, they served everything in plastic. So we went behind the bar and grabbed a bunch of bottles and smashed those. And for some reason, like we expected them to get more mad, but the, ba the bartenders and bouncers were all like, yeah, like really into it. I think it was just the owner that was pissed, but I ended up, uh, you know, you pay for what you do. And I got a piece of the glass in my knee of some filthy uh, English beer bottle from a muddy floor. They had like one doctor for like 6,000 patients or something. And the guy was a rude asshole too. <laughs> I had uh, somebody pulled an IV out of my arm that she had missed the uh, artery or the vein or whatever, and my blood squirted all over her and all over the, the charts and, and like all over everything. There was like, like a, literally like a six foot arc of blood came out of me and she just left the room with me holding a napkin on my arm and then I fell asleep like that because I was really sick. And uh, later on a doctor came in and he's like, why is there blood everywhere? And I like trying to explain to him with this 104 fever that this woman had come in and stabbed me and my blood all over the place. And then he's like, okay, well, let's take a look at your charts. And he opened the chart and like threw it across the room because it was covered in blood. And he's like, and he had, he's like, I have your blood on my hands, which I thought was really appropriate somehow.